It's summer 2024, and Apple finally entered the AI conversation, more specifically, the generative AI conversation. Remember, ChatGPT was unleashed to the world in November 2022. Apple announced their AI, Apple Intelligence, during their 2024 Worldwide Developers Conference in a two-hour presentation. It's pretty on-brand for Apple to make the technology all about them. AI, Apple Intelligence, it just makes sense. Anyways, there's a lot to break down, so let's get into it. What is Apple Intelligence? Why is OpenAI involved with Apple? Is it OpenAI funded by Microsoft? Is Apple Intelligence just ChatGPT? Why did I say generative AI? And what is it? These are all questions I imagine you may ask yourself. If you're not, that's okay too. First, let's clear up one thing. Apple Intelligence is Apple's entry into generative AI, but Apple has been integrating AI into almost all of its technologies for years. So what exactly is generative AI compared to traditional AI or machine learning? Generative AI, like ChatGPT, uses large language models, LLMs, to create new content on the spot. An LLM is like a very advanced computer program that has read a huge amount of text from books, articles, websites, and more. It learns from all this reading to understand and generate human-like text, images, or even music. For example, OpenAI's GPT-4, which powers ChatGPT, has 1.76 trillion parameters. Think of these parameters as settings or rules that help the AI know how to respond accurately and relevantly. Traditional AI, often referred to as machine learning, involves programs that learn from existing data to make predictions or decisions. These systems are great at identifying patterns and making recommendations. For instance, Netflix uses traditional AI to suggest shows you might like based on your viewing history. Generative AI goes a step further by not just analyzing data, but creating new content. In a really simple example, it's like the difference between recognizing a picture of a cat, traditional AI, and drawing a new picture of a cat based on a description generative AI. So Apple took their generative AI technology and put it into Siri, which is a huge upgrade. I've personally never used Siri, and I'm pretty sure the majority of you with an iPhone have never used Siri either. That could change. A few of the notable improvements include a writing tool. So instead of taking your email draft and plugging it into ChatGPT to make it sound better, just ask Siri to do the same. You can summarize your email or other text into bullet points or even change the tone. Another cool feature is the ability to create any emoji you want. You can even take photos of people and make them into emojis. While these features are cool, this is just the beginning. You'll be able to treat Siri like a personal assistant. Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple boasted that Siri will know more about you than you do. And this may be true because now Siri takes in all the information on your phone, text messages, photos, emails, reminders, and uses that as context for when you interact. I can tell Siri to call her and it will know I'm speaking about my mother if we were texting earlier in the day. Or I could ask Siri to remind me of my weekend plans since it has access to my calendar. One of the biggest concerns over AI in general has been security. One of Apple's most important values is security for users. So how are they accomplishing this? Well, the majority of the AI can be run right on your phone. Apple emphasizes on-device processing, meaning your data stays on your device as much as possible. This enhances privacy and security because your personal information isn't sent out to outside servers. However, some tasks like generating high quality images or handling complex tasks require more power than a device can provide. So you as a user will have two options. Option one is where Apple sends the necessary information through private cloud compute to Apple servers to carry out the task. Once the task is handled by Apple servers, the information is sent back to your phone or other devices. Apple just field private cloud compute as their new and very, very secure way to send information from your device to their servers and back. Option two is what people are going crazy about. Apple partnered with OpenAI so you can instead send the necessary information to ChatGPT, OpenAI's servers, to carry out the task. Then, ChatGPT sends the answer back to your phone. This is kind of scary though, because if you choose option two, you're willing to send your data related to the task to OpenAI, who can then do whatever they want with it after the fact. Maybe not whatever they want, but they are certainly going to use your data in ways Apple won't. So before you click use ChatGPT, take a second to think about it. What's even crazier about the partnership between Apple and OpenAI is that Apple won't pay OpenAI for this partnership. Every time you use ChatGPT or you ask Siri to use ChatGPT, that is costing OpenAI money. It is not free to curate answers or content with generative AI. Apple claims that by distributing ChatGPT to millions of Apple users, 
that is payment enough. They're doing OpenAI service by exposing them to more people. Some tech enthusiasts even think OpenAI should pay Apple to do this. This is really interesting because it can kind of be compared to how Google pays Apple almost $20 billion a year to be the default search engine for Safari. You know when you open up Safari and your search goes to Google instead of Yahoo or Bing? Yeah, that costs $20 billion. So you can now see how this could work for AI. In the future, Apple could charge other AI companies to be their partner. If OpenAI wants people to have the option to use ChatGPT instead of Gemini, Google's AI, or Grok, Elon's AI, they may have to pay. It's gonna be a very interesting future for sure. Also, in a masterclass of sales and marketing, you will have to buy the new iPhone 15 or the latest laptops or tablets to even gain access to Apple intelligence. That's one way to force people to buy more product. You have to applaud Apple for thinking about the long game here. In the meantime, I'm Sahil, and thank you for listening to Uninvested. I'll be back for the next episode on every other Thursday at 6 p.m. Peace. This is a personal video. Any views or opinions represented in this video are personal and do not represent those of people, institutions, or organizations we may or may not be associated with in a professional or personal capacity. The views are expressed are for entertainment purposes only and not to be misinterpreted as actionable investment advice.